So welcome back. I've got all my stuff here. I've got my fancy Rotring Rapid Pro. This is a really nice pencil here. It's got the the spring action in here, which um, is hard to find. I my original pencil that I bought in 1984, which I still have, but it's locked in my office right now, has the spring action, and I went through my entire college education with that pencil and through a lot of my working career in the real world where you know we actually made things and uh, I'm really attached to that pencil but uh, it's locked up right now and I, I bought this Rotring Rapid Pro it's nice though it's steel it has a little knurled edge I'd highly recommend it and I got my coffee and I got my four ounce black sweatshirt I'm sorry four ounce black t-shirt now because back in March I was wearing a I think it was a 10 ounce black sweatshirt and then I switched to a six ounce black sweatshirt because it was getting a little bit warmer and now I'm down to a four ounce black t-shirt so I got all my equipment so I'm ready to go and uh, I hope it works for you so we're going to do chapter 14, Frequency Selective Circuits. So, um, so 12 and 13, chapter 12 and 13, where Laplace transforms and then using Laplace for circuit analysis. It's really good. That stuff was good by itself, but it was also just serving you to get ready for this other stuff. So we have the idea so far of, of the transfer function, H of S, right? Now remember the transfer function is the ratio of, of an output to an input. And most of the time, those output and ins input signals are voltage signals, although they can be other things. But in this chapter, they will be voltage signals. So that leads us to this idea of attenuation. So for a passive circuit, right, with chapter 14 is passive. There's no power going into the, into the circuit element part. I mean, there is a source that has power, but the rest of the circuit, the circuit that we're going to analyze, is passive. So it, the signal going in is going to get used up by the resistors. And so the signal coming out is going to be less than the signal going in. It's going to be attenuated. So we, um, we can think of the transfer function as a, in a, a signal that attenuates. So the output's going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. Um, or that is the ratio of, of the ratio of the output to the input is going to be somewhere between zero and one, and uh, we call that that number between zero and one the attenuation. So here's a little diagram. Like if say we had a sinusoidal signal, which is mostly what we're going to be dealing with, although not exclusively. Um, but but at least academically, we start thinking about sinusoidal signals in here. In real life, you could have signals that are complicated but we'll look we'll learn in chapter 16 that even complicated signals can be thought of as as a sum of sinusoidal signals according to Fourier which is amazing but anyway so for now we're going to be dealing with simple sinusoidal signals so you have a sinusoidal signal of a particular frequency because s is is a frequency domain and it might come out with a smaller amplitude right so it might be that input signal might be and attenuated to some degree Okay, so there's an attenuation of the amplitude. There's also a phase shift, right? So for sinusoids, the output is equal or smaller than the than the input. That is, H of S is a, there the magnitude of H of S will be a value between zero and one. So the out that which basically that means that the output will be um, equal or smaller than the input in in amplitude, and it'll also have a phase shift. But uh, the phase shift is less useful. So I'm just going to kind of leave that out. So anyway, those uh, this attenuation is dependent is a function of the frequency. Okay, so all all um, trans all circuits that can be analyzed with the transfer function, which is like every circuit really, but they they all of all circuits when you look at their transfer function, they're going to have some kind of frequency response. That is, the attenuation will be dependent on the frequency to, okay, for any circuit. But just to get started, we're going to look at these four categories of 
of circuits, which we call filters. Just keep in mind, though, that any circuit will have some kind of frequency response. Now, it'll have some kind of attenuation and, and phase shift dependent on frequency. But we're just going to look at these four classic uh, circuits here. So there's a low pass circuit, a high pass circuit, a band pass circuit, and a band reject. By the way, we're not going to look at the band reject just to save some time. So let's go through all four of those things. So if you have a low pass filter, then um, there's, well, there, there's two ways to make a simple low pass filter. Once again, keep in mind there are more complicated filters that, that there are more complicated circuits that may just by chance or maybe by intention will behave like low pass filters. Okay. But we're just going to look at classic, you know, the simplest kind of circuit that you can make that would behave as a low pass filter, right? And the simplest way you could, the simplest low pass circuit you could make are these two things. So you can have an input voltage here and then an output voltage measured here. So the transfer function is the ratio of the output over the input, right? And for this particular circuit, um, for, for both of these really, that the transfer function has this uh, frequency domain, Laplace domain um, form, omega, omega C over S plus omega C. And um, there's two there's two versions of this where uh, one, you're measuring the voltage across the resistor, the output voltage, and another version where you're measuring the output voltage across a capacitor. And for this one, um, omega C is R over L, and this one, omega C is 1 over RC. And what is what is omega C? Omega C is the cutoff frequency, okay? Cutoff frequency omega C is the frequency where the transfer function is attenuating by 0 0.707. Or in math form, it, you know, the magnitude of the... Uh, transfer function um, using j omega for the frequency is 1 over root 2. And this this is why 1 over root 2. It comes from, it's related to power. The book talks about it a little bit more. It's, it's, uh, it's somewhat arbitrary. They, they could have chosen another value, but there are reasons that they chose this value. So the, the cutoff, so here we have a plot of the attenuation basically. The, mag the uh, magnitude of H of J omega, the magnitude of that. So this is going to be a value between 0 and 1, right? Uh, so we call that the attenuation uh, as a function of the frequency of the input signal. So here we have some, some, some input signal with a certain frequency. It's being attenuated by a certain amount. That attenuation is going to be somewhere between 1 and 0. And uh, as the frequency increases that signal is, the, uh, the uh, input signal is attenuated more. That is, you know, the output, the ratio of the output to the input will be, will be uh, you know, uh, the effect of that will be greater. So, okay, so for a low-pass filter, as, as omega increases, that is, higher frequency signals will be attenuated more. And there's a certain frequency called the cutoff frequency where the attenuation is exactly 1 over square root of 2, which is 0 0.707. Okay, so uh, before I move on, let me just say again, so frequencies with a, with a low, or signals, input signals with a very low frequency will, will get through. They will, they will get through this, this uh, filter. With, with very little attenuation. And then higher frequency signals over here will be attenuated a lot more. They'll, they'll come out weak, much weaker. Okay, so um, yeah, that's the basic idea. And then, um, so both of these low pass filters have this transfer function, omega C or S plus omega C, both of these, even though one is measured across R and one is measured across S over C. And we're not going to prove that, but I'll just show you the derivation of this transfer function here for, for this, right? So here's the derivation. 
So basically on this little, this little top circuit, just doing the derivation for this top circuit, um, the transfer function is the output over the input, right? So h of s is v0 of s over vi of s, the ratio of the output over the input. And then voltage, voltage division on this little circuit right here would be this formula right here, right? The output voltage, vo, is the input voltage divided by the ratio of the voltage, uh, the ratio of the resist the um, the impedance at the signal of interest R over the total impedance R plus S L. That's just voltage division. Okay, so the rest is just manipulation. If you um, multiply, uh, if you mul if you um, multiply both sides of this equation by, or rather if you divide, sorry, if you divide both sides of this equation by VI, you get, um, you get V0 over v VI, like here, uh, this side would be V0 over, v over VI, and this would be VI over VI, which would cancel, and you'd end up with V0 over VI, which is H sub S. And then this stuff here, if you, um, we want to get we want to isolate s in these transfer in these um, in these uh, transfer functions in these Laplace forms we want this form down here so to get rid of the l we multiply the top and the bottom times one over l and the l cancels here and it goes underneath these r's so you end up with this h of s is uh, r over l over r over l plus s or you could rewrite it omega sub c over s plus omega sub c where r sub c is, is uh, r over l so this is just a simple derivation showing where this transfer function comes from and that was a derivation on this circuit here now strangely if you did a similar derivation on this circuit here you would get a you would get a similar uh, you would get the same transfer function it's just that Omega C, the cutoff frequency, would would be um, defined a little differently. Okay, so that was that's page one. Basically, the idea of, of a transfer function is the ratio of the output over over the input, and what that means is that an input signal will be attenuated somewhere between zero and one. It'll that is an input signal will come out weaker than it's than it went in. Um, and that's that attenuation is a function of the frequency. So for a low-pass filter, higher frequency signals are attenuated more. All right. There's there's other kinds of of, of these classic simple filters. Um, the other kind that we're going to look at is a high-pass filter. So there's two kinds or two circuits. Once again, any circuit that can be expressed as a H of S will have some frequency characteristics, but what we're studying in this chapter is the simplest circuits that will that will do that. So here's a high pass filter and the um, I guess the place to jump in is this this curve right here, the attenuation curve. So this has the opposite shape of the of the low pass filter. That is as the frequency of the input signal increases, the attenuation is uh, is less. So, like if the signal had zero frequency, that is, if it were a pure DC circuit, it won't get through at all. It'll be completely attenuated. The transfer function will behave like an open circuit, and as the frequency of the input signal increases, it will be. Uh, the attenuation will be close to one, so it'll be attenuated very, very little. And then once again, there's a cutoff frequency where the attenuation is exactly one over square root of two. So there's two circuits that we're going to look at that have this high pass filter characteristic. You can make one with a cap. You can make one with an inductor. 
you can, if you use a cap, you measure the output voltage across the resistor, and if you use an inductor, you measure the output voltage across the inductor. The cutoff frequency uh, equations change for these two guys. So that's a high pass filter. It'll pass signals with high frequency. They, right, high frequency signals will get through the filter with a, a high strength. Okay, then the last filter we're gonna look at is a band pass filter. So this will pass a range of frequencies or a band. So uh, there's two kinds we're gonna look at. There's a series RLC. So you need all, all three of our passive elements resistor, capacitor, inductor. If you put all three in series, you get a... Um, if you put all three in series and you measure the output voltage across the resistor, you get a bandpass filter. You can also put the, uh, the reactive elements, the inductor and the capacitor, put those guys in parallel and measure the output voltage across those two guys, and that will act as a bandpass filter. Both of these circuits will have this transfer function given by beta s or bs uh, over s squared plus beta s plus omega zero squared. And uh, beta is the bandwidth, okay, this width between these two cutoff frequencies is the bandwidth. And then there's a center frequency, which isn't exactly in the center, but they call it the center frequency, omega zero. It's actually closer to the right or the left a little bit. It's not the exact center. This curve is not symmetrical here. So omega zero is actually a little to the left, but they still call it the center frequency. So you've got bandwidth. So you've got two cutoffs. And at the, at the cutoff, cutoff one and cutoff two, uh, it, those are both frequencies at which the attenuation is 1 over square root of 2. Okay? And then the distance between those two frequencies is the bandwidth. So this, this, this circuit will pass frequencies that are in this bandwidth. It'll pass them with an attenuation no more than 1 over square root of 2. Right, and then signals lo with lower frequency than that, or higher frequency than than these two cutoffs, will get attenuated more. All right, and let's see what else can we say. So the betas have different formulas depending on the circuit here. The bandwidths are given by this R over L and one over RC thing. Skipping pages and pages of derivation, and it's in the text. If you're the mathy inclined, you can look at those. Um, I'm more of the engineering inclined, and I just want the tools so I can go do stuff. It's just the way I happen to be wired, uh, so to speak. Um, I wish I were more mathy, but I'm not. Anyway, so the center frequency, omega zero, we have some other equations. One is for the center frequency, omega zero. It's given by this root one over LC thing. It's also given by um, multiply the two cutoffs together and then take their square root. That'll give you the center frequency. Pre I mean, pre pretty. I see the beauty in that. Even though this isn't the center, it's neat how this these, these formulas are so concise. Anyway... Um, then there's another thing, the quality factor. So that's basically how a measure of kind of how wide the bandwidth is. We call that the quality factor. Okay, it's the ratio of the uh, cutoff frequency to the bandwidth. And um, it, it's a number that could be specified. Like you might want a more peaky kind of, kind of curve, or you might want a more wider kind of curve. That would be this quality factor thing. And you could design the circuit around that. And then, yeah, bandwidth is just the difference between these two cutoff frequencies, omega C2 minus omega C1. Oh, and then there's this one here, which is just out of the book because it's useful in one of the homework problems. It's, it's crazy, but this, the author derives this formula for us, and we, it shows up in one of the problems. So, um, yeah, it's, um, these two cutoff frequencies here are given by this. Uh, and it almost looks like a quadratic, 
and it, 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 quadratic has something to do with it, but it's not exactly the quadratic formula, but almost. So it's uh, plus or minus this first term, and plus the root of this other junk. Okay, that'll. This is just a useful tool for the, one of the problems that we're doing. It doesn't have as much theoretical uh, utility for understanding, perhaps, but it is we are going to use it. All right, that's that's the overview of the scribbly notes. I hope that was good, and I hope my uh, my shirt is not, you know, throwing you off in any way. It's thinner than the other garments I've been wearing, but and uh, get yourself one of these rotrings, rings, man. Invest in a good pencil. It's worth it. Okay, see you next time.